Hey, you going, guys? <clears throat> so here we are, back again, having a yarn, another yarn to you guys. And finally, I got my internet sorted out after the dilemmas I've had over the past few weeks. So hopefully, um, yeah, tonight's coming in all loud and clear. <laughs> Patiently waiting for the host. Well, host has finally, finally turned up for the show. So here we are. So hopefully, it's all going through all right. Good on you guys. Thanks so much there coming through. Um, so a bit of a topic we're going to have a chat about tonight is um, sort of for maybe newbie fall drivers, a few tips for, for them going forward about momentum. Now, this is a pretty hot sort of a topic and, you know, how much is too much and how much is not enough, you know, to get you through certain situations. So we'll have a bit of a chat about this as we go forward. Now, I've got, um, again, a bit, of a bit of a list going on here. So we're going to cover sort of a, a couple of terrains tonight. One is going to be sand dunes, sort of muddy conditions and river crossings. Now, I think with momentum, it can be your friend, but I tell you what, if you push that friendship too far and too much, it can very quickly become your enemy as well. So we'll cover this sort of stuff as we go forward and it's coming all through loud and clear fitting and i like to hear it's all coming through loud and clear mike doug g'day guys how you going there chasing the dreams finally made it to a live version thanks very much there tuning in there tonight mate really appreciate it max and all those sort of guys chasing uh, greg good on you thanks very much there coming tonight now the other thing too with momentum um you know tire pressures play a big part certainly with all the things we're going to sort of talk about tonight and tire pressures play a big part with all sorts of full drive and all facets of it. But we're not going to go into tire pressures tonight. That's a topic maybe for another another time down the track. So we're going to exclude tire pressures. But yep, tire pressures are a big part of you know what we're going to go through tonight. But we'll get into that maybe some other time down the track. So let's get into the first one I've got here, and that's about sand dunes and um you know, and taking on, you know, a decent size sort of a sand dune. Now, the thing with sand dunes, feeding income, momentum is absolutely your friend. You want as much as you possibly can get. That is going to be also keeping you safe as well, you know. Um, so, again, safety is big key with all these things we're going to go through tonight. But feeding income, momentum, you need a stack of it with any sort of a soft sort of a sand dune, going up those sort of things. Now, Generally, I'll start probably a sand dune in second gear just to get rolling and I would snap into third as quickly as possible. And that is a gear that I would hold or try and hold all the way to the top. Now, fourth gear, again, probably, you know, if you're going to chuck it into fourth gear, probably maybe going to be a maybe a bit too high and it's probably going to bog you down and not get you over the top. So I would find for myself and maybe a few of you guys that, Third gear is probably going to get you, you know, enough enough speed up, enough high revs because your engine's going to be screaming. So don't worry about, you know, watching tacos and, you know, boost pressure and that sort of stuff because you're going to need as much as you possibly can to get you up and over. Because you don't want to be changing gears. You want to change at least as gears as least amount as possible with any sort of a sand dune. Because the second you, if you're halfway up going up a hill, up a sand dune hill, the second you hit that clutch, you're buggered. You're going to be gone. You're going to lose, you're going to wash off all the momentum that you've worked all that hard to get to. So you've got to try and get a gear from the bottom and it's going to get you all the way to the top. And if it doesn't get you to the top, as soon as you start spinning tyres, well, you want to come to a, come to a stop as quickly as possible and don't try keeping on going. You know, the thing with sand, while those tyres are spinning, it's like a cheese grater. They're just digging in, in deeper and deeper and very, very quickly. So there's no point. If you come to a stop, there's no point trying to keep on going. So the only, thing, the only options you've got then with a sand dune is just throw it in reverse, head back down the bottom then and have another crack. And if it's, you know, if you're not going to get all the way up, you know, in, in that gear selections you've got, well, then you've got to look at other recovery options. Maybe you might have to put some boards down or maybe you've already got one of your mates that's sitting up at the top of the hill there already. And, you know, you might be able to throw a winch, uh, you know, winch rope off your vehicle onto his to winch off the back of his and get you up and over the top. But feeling them, yeah, as soon as you start spinning tyres, you're buggered. And changing gears midway up, no good at all. So you've got to try and get a gear all the way from the bottom that's going to get you all the way up. And that's why I would start in second just to get rolling and snap into third really quickly and get into it. <laughs> and try and hopefully that's going to get you all the way to the top. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's sort of the options there with, with sand, sand dunes. So I'd be pretty keen, you know, as we go through. Again, if you guys have got any sort of feedback with any of these sort of things we're going to talk about here tonight, 
throw them in the comments down below and we'll I'll answer those as we're going forward. So that's sort of pretty much sort of cut. And the only thing I probably might throw in there, maybe, you know, if you've got an auto, I mean, I'm talking about manuals with pretty much a lot because I drive a manual all the time, but with an auto in, the, in that same situation, in a um, you know an uphill sand dune thing, you're going to tr try and drive that again. You'd probably want to lock it into a gear, maybe lock it into your second, or um, you know, or maybe go from second and, and then lock it into your third. I wouldn't leave it in drive because if you leave it in drive, well, it's going to change gears as soon as the revs start talking to that that automatic transmission. It's going to start ch changing the gears for you, and it's a bit like hitting the clutch on on a manual. So. You want to lock it into a gear that's going to stay in that gear and hopefully get you all the way and up and over the top in that automatic situation. So there, there's some uh, some tips here with both manuals and autos, um, and there's certain differences. You know they're, they're kind of a little bit similar. Like I say, you know if if you go change if it auto go if you leave it in drive and it goes changing gears by itself, well it's a bit like hitting the clutch in a manual. You bug it. So yeah, lock that gear in and get yourself all the way to the top. Otherwise, you're going to look at other options to get you up and over. But sand dune, driving, it's a stack of fun. If you haven't done it, try and get on it. And, you know, there's plenty of places where you can go and do it. So have a crack at it, that's for sure. Um, hey, Mud Ducks, how are you going there, mate? Good to see you there tonight, Steve. Thanks so much there going tonight. And Mark, um, go from sunny Benalla, or Ballina. Uh, hopefully it's going right up there in uh, New South Wales where you guys are up there. Uh, West Australian Off-Road, how are you going there, mate? Uh, hopefully everything's going on for you over there in WA. I think WA is tipping along pretty all right. So we'll get into maybe the next one here now, muddy, slippery tracks. Um, this is sort of the next one. Now, again, momentum, again, with this one, is your friend, a bit like sand dune driving. Very, very similar, but different as well. So we'll, we'll get into this as we go forward. Just have another little sip of that. Now, again, with... Mud, muddy tracks, look, muddy, mud driving is great fun going up. And we, this is all going up hills, not so much going down hills. The last thing you want, you know, you don't probably want momentum going down hills because it's going to work against you big time. This is all about going up, um, all these sort of situations we're going to talk about. So the thing with um, with driving a, a, you know, a muddy track, if particularly if you don't have ruts that you, know, you can drive in, if you've just got a nice smooth track and it's you no know, nice gradient going uphill, well, again, gear selection here is going to be really important. So it's a bit going to be a bit similar to driving on sand for for myself. So I would again be starting off in second gear, and I'd be thrown into the third as quick as possible. The thing with with mud driving on a you know on a steep uphill sort of a section. If you go if you go changing gears, it's not going to be quite so bad to bog you down like it will be with with sand. Like as soon as you hit that clutch in sand, you bug it. Whereas mud driving, it can be a little bit different because you got the momentum going. You're going to be you know skating across you know that muddy, slippery sort of a track as you're going up. So if you need to change gear, I don't know whether it's going to fourth because that's pretty extreme going into fourth gear. But you know you just might depends on what your how your gear ratios and all that sort of stuff work. But Generally, again, you know, you're going to start at the bottom, start off in second and get rolling and then throw it into third really quickly. And hopefully that's going to be enough to, you know, get you up to where you've got to go. Otherwise, again, you've got to start looking at recovery options. Um, but, you know, if you've got ruts, well, at least ruts are going to sort of keep you in the direction where you want to go. A bit like driving on train track. Train tracks really there. Wherever the ruts go is where you're going to end up going too. So, but if you haven't got those ruts, that's where you do need to really have that fine balance between too much momentum and not enough because if you go pushing boundaries with momentum here, it can very, very quickly become your enemy and turn very, very ugly. So, you know, you could slip off the track in down down the side of a track or into a tree or something like that. So you need to be really, really careful when you're driving muddy, muddy, slippery tracks. If they're smooth and no ruts and you're into it, um, yeah, that's where you've got to be a little bit careful about your momentum and how much is too much. But you've just got to weigh that up as long as you're, you know, you've got enough going on there. Engines again is going to be screaming pretty hard. But as long as you've got enough momentum there where, you know, it's keeping you going forward, well, just keep on that pace and maybe don't push it any further than what you do. So just get those revs up enough that's going to keep you going and get yourself up to the top. And the thing with, with Muddy too, you know, if you come to it, do come to a stop, well, you probably could maybe reverse up a little bit or you may even be able to get going from where you are. You know, that's the difference again from that to sand driving. Sand driving, as soon as you stop, you're buggered, reverse back down and have another go. So 
So that's the thing there with um, with muddy tracks as opposed to um, driving sand. You know, some similarities there, but also some big, big differences as well. So you need to be very, very careful with that. Um, and then we'll get into – this is a big one. Now, this one feeding does my head in sometimes when I see this sort of stuff going on, and that's river crossings. Um, <laughs> river crossings. Now, the ultimate selection here now, m momentum is – can be your friend here, but again, if you push the momentum too fast in river crossings, Fairningham is going to be your enemy to the nth degree and big time, talking big time potential damage going on here. So we'll get into this one again as we go forward. But um, chat with you guys, a couple of you guys going on there. Hope everything's going all right. Kevin tried uh, tried to spin tyres going up a muddy track. Look, and again, the, the more you spin, particularly with mud, if you can get those tyres spinning, if you've got a mud tyre there or a good all train or something like that, spinning those tyres, you're going to be clearing that tread out too. So that's what's going to give you, you know, that traction to hopefully keep moving forward. Whereas with sand, it's a little bit different because your tread's not necessarily going to get filled up with, you know, like it does with mud. But, um, but yeah, as soon, soon as you start spinning tyres in, in sand, bogs in. Choosing like a Phoenix, like a cheese grater, and you'll come to a stop really, really quickly. But let's get into the rivers because this one here is a big one. Um, now, I always do my river crossings in it's the ultimate gear, it seems to be second gear, low range. Now, the only time where you need a decent sort of momentum when we're talking river crossings is if the river is like bull bar deep or uh, bull bar depth or deeper. Well, that's when you need to get some good momentum going. But look, if the if the river crossing's below your bull bar, well, you know you can just crawl across there and just you know just do do your thing because you haven't got any force going up against your bull bar. Water's going to be running underneath your vehicle, and there's no real force on your vehicle. But if it's at bull bar depth or deeper, um, that's where momentum is absolutely critical. And it's and it's again it's getting that gear selection right before you even start. So second gear, low range. With a manual, you don't want to be changing gears halfway across because as soon as you hit that clutch, water gets inside your, your clutch and all that sort of stuff, and it can cause all sorts of issues with, you know, engaging your, your gears and sort of stuff too. So getting your gear selection right from the get-go with a manual is absolutely critical when it comes to river crossings. Now, one thing I, I, I see a lot here when we're talking about, you know, too much momentum when it comes to doing river crossings um, is these – these ones that you see, you know, you see people flying through in their four drives. They fly through a river crossing, especially if it's a little bit like shallow. It's bull bar under your bull bar and that sort of thing, so it's not overly deep. But you see them fly through this massive water spout going on. Yeah, it looks fantastic. It's great footage. You're going to get some wicked photos. But I tell you what, it's the best way to damage any sort of you know delicate wiring that's sort of under your bonnet because that massive spray is going to end up in your into your you know into your engine bay and things like that. But it's also a great way of sucking that fan into your back in backwards. The blades will suck backwards into your radiator and it'll chew your radiator to bits. Now, this I've seen firsthand. I've been on trips with guys where this is fair income happen. And if you chew it up badly enough and you haven't got like a soldering iron or something like that, <laughs> one of you guys might be really handy where you can, you know, solder up those holes in the radiator, you are fair income buggered. And not only that, if it hits it, if you choose your radio up badly enough, well, it's going to chew up all your fan blades as well. And this I've seen feeding them firsthand. And it's it's a world of trouble if you do enough damage. And one of the trips I went on where this did happen, um, and we had to go and get all sorts of um, all sorts of searching to try and get a new fan, fan, you know, cluster sort of sent out to us and get this vehicle back on the road again. But so there's a big one there with river crossings. Um, yeah, second gear, low range, crawl through, particularly if it's bull bar depth or deeper. You just want to create that bow wave so you've got a nice amount of water that's coming off the front of your vehicle, um, not going across way too fast, just a nice bit of bow wave coming off the front, and that's going to sort of keep most of the water out of inside your engine bay. But look, if it's getting sort of bull bar depth or deeper, well, that's when also you might want to think about, you know, chucking on a water blind. But again, that's another topic we can have for another time for those deeper river crossings. Um, so, yeah, there, there's certainly some big ones there, but but fair income, don't go racing through through river crossings um, overly fast because, like I say, you know, yeah, it looks great on, and I've seen so much of this and I've been on trips where this is fair income happened, as I've said, you know, and 
Um, yeah, if you want to punch the hole through your radio, this is a that's a great way to go and do it. If you want to go and destroy your radiator and your fan at the same time. Um, so yeah, how are you going there, guys? Um, uh, CRJ, how are you going there, mate? Uh, here a tip: River crossings need to tie the fan up. Yeah, there we go. There's uh, there's a tip. There's a good little tip there um, to tie your fan up. Um, but again, if, if you're not going, if you don't race them through too fast, if you're only going through at that nice little, as I mentioned, you know, second gear low range, just crawling through, get that nice little bow wave. You do not need to go about that sort of extreme if you don't want to. But, you know, if you're going to fly through to a million miles an hour, well, you might want to tie your fan up because feeding them, you're going to, feeding them probably a good way, you're going to punch a hole massively through your radiator and do all sorts of damage. And then good luck getting out to wherever you are. There we go, Ben, alternators as well. Uh, huge water crossing issues. Well, they are too. Depends on where your alternator is, particularly if it's down low. Um, that's one good thing with the GU. With Nissan, they thought about that and they put the uh, alternator up really high. But, yeah, there, there's some good ones there you got to certainly think about. Um, alternators are a big one, you know, with, with uh, water ingress and, and that sort of thing. They, you know, they are a waterproof sort of an item, but they don't like a stack of water going in them. You know, we all drive down the road in the rain and that's all fine. But when you're throwing them into a river crossing, it's a very, very different cup of tea. So there's another, that's a really good tip there, uh, mate, about the, um, about the alternator. G'day, Darren from uh, Benambra. How are you going there, mate? Yeah, it's, that's a really nice spot up there, just the other side of Amy. Hopefully it's all going well for you up there. Um, yeah, so that's a good one there, Ben. Yeah, speed kills every time in the bush. It, it does. You know? um, but again, it's just finding that fine line between, you know, how much momentum is enough and and uh, then how much is too much, where it very quickly becomes your enemy. If it comes your enemy in any of those situations, whether it's river crossing sand or muddy tracks, that sort of stuff, uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna cause your will to hurt. So you gotta to, gotta to, um, find that fine line and um, and just get out there and, and and do it. That's for sure. G'day, Ross. How you going there, mate? Thanks so much there for coming in here tonight. Greatly appreciate it, mate. Um, Patrick, uh, I've had bent pistons in my TD near GQ. There you go. Um, and especially some of the older vehicles too. Like I think it's pre. What is it? Where the uh, you know we got to spray spray the engines. Is it pre ninety or something? What it is? Uh, where the electrics don't like water. So, you know, you've got to think about that too. If you're going through, again, way too fast, you're going to want to spray some of your electricals before you go drop into any sort of river crossing because um, the last thing you want is anything sort of shorten out or get sort of electrical issues halfway across. Um, so, yeah, so there's other things you've got to think about, particularly some of the older model vehicles, whereas, you know, the modern day ones, all the electrics are fairly well sealed or your fuel, fuel and all that sort of thing, injectors all fairly well sealed so you can handle, you know, water to a point. But it's just getting that fine line is absolutely the key. Uh, high country, how are you going, mate? Um, slow down and don't tailgate the bush. Yeah, look, mate, there's all sorts of stuff. Keep your lights on. Yeah, absolutely. I, I always drive with my lights on all the time. And, um, yeah, give people plenty of space. There's no worries about that. Wanderer, um, hope all is well, mate. Yeah, look, it's going right here. Uh, best tip for any, any newbie is uh, slow down and just uh, just about any terrain, slow down and steady wins the race. Yeah, absolutely. And, look, shouldn't be in any rush. I mean, what's when you're going out in the bush, going camping and whatever else, what's fitting and what's the rush? So just take your time and just enjoy the tracks you're on, enjoy the scenery and everything else, and you'll get through and you'll have a cracking day. But, yeah, don't want that too much momentum going on because it's not – Great at all. Leanne River Crossings killed my gear, killed the starter motor in her Prado. There, there you go. So there's um there's one there. In my uh yeah, my starter motor's yeah, fairly, fairly um out of the way there, so it's probably not too bad, but I'm not sure where it, where yours is in the Prado. Uh Rolly, how are you going there, mate? Um greatly appreciate you dropping in tonight. Appreciate all that, mate. Thanks very much. Uh Wonder, glad uh, you have sorted your, your streaming issues, mate. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. Like, that was feeding and that was not great. So in the end, it just turned out to be just a new modem. Like over three weeks, I had no internet going on here at all. I had a couple of um, couple of uh, technicians came out on two of the two occasions over that three weeks and couldn't sort the problem out. So anyway, they've sent me a new modem and hey, here we are back on talking to you guys. And it's great, love it. Uh, Dada, um, uh, ever had any scary river crossing moments? I, I sort of haven't. Um, you know, the river crossing is one of those things that uh, you got to weigh it up at the time. And, you know, if, if they're too deep, you should really walk every sort of river crossing unless you really, really know it well and depending on what time of year you're going, but you should always walk them. And, and if you can't walk them, well, 
end of the day, you shouldn't be driving it. So, you know, there's, there's a sort of thing. But no, I haven't had any bad moments at all um, crossing rivers. I do have a water blind out there and, and over winter time, I carry it with me all the time just in case. You just never know. So, again, that's another topic we can have for um, maybe a different time down the track. Um, Bush Adventures going there, mate. Uh, driving too fast um, and hit some rocks, you'll you'll damage uh, suspension. Look, you can damage all sorts of stuff, absolutely. You can throw rocks up, you know, going too fast. Again, too much momentum there. You're going to be throwing rocks everywhere. Could be hitting one of your mates behind you. So, yeah, it's all about travelling slow. I mean, yeah, there's no rush to go anywhere, but get that momentum right in any of those situations. Uh, Braden, here you go there, mate. If you have an older petrol engine, yeah, that hates water. Yeah, tire shine works a treat. And there you go. I, I'm about to do a video about tire shine under my engine base. So absolutely, there you go. There's one there that helps um, helps some of those older models here. That's the go. Chris and Bobby, how you going there, mate? Thanks for dropping in. Um, buggered, he buggered his alternator out the back of um, Navathon there a few years ago. So there you go. There's another one there with, with water. And funny how all these topics that we're after we've you know, we've covered a couple of terrains here. Everything's about water, water and grass, water, you know, and river crossing is the last thing you want to get wrong. You know, we all like driving river crossings. They are great fun. It's a great part of, you know, what we do, you know, we like to go out there and do some river crossings. But feeding them, I think out of probably all recoveries, getting a river crossing wrong is probably one of the worst ones because, you know, if, if you stall or have damage or, you know, you stop halfway across on a flowing river, well, who knows what's going to happen. Your car's going to get flooded. You get washed downstream. And so it's really, really important that you do river crossings right and get them right before you even get in. And, um, yeah, have your plan and make sure you can see both sides, you know, see your other side, make sure you know where the, in, where the exit's going to be. And, and, yeah, if it's flowing too fast, make sure you get in there and, Go for a bit of a walk and send someone in for a bit of a walk and see how deep it is and how fast it's flowing. It's certainly the go, that's for sure. Uh, Mix for all driving. How you going there, mate? <clears throat> Let a beginner's run to teach some basics uh, and, and help people get to, uh, get to know their vehicles a couple of years back and I had to, had to keep keep telling people to back off and slow down. Yeah, well, there you go. Um, I, I, I don't know don't know why um, people need to sit so close. I have been away on, on a few group trips over years and, you know, you just maybe sometimes get that odd one who just for some reason just wants to sit, you know, like <laughs> right up your ginger and, it, yeah, it's it's annoying, but um, you certainly do get them. Uh, Kevin, uh, if you don't look look right, no, don't don't cross. Yeah, look spot on, Kev. River crossings, it's all about river crossings. So you great, great feedback there. Uh, Ross, before you turn the key on, uh, turn your brain on. That's absolutely a, probably a good one there too, mate. Yeah. That's a good one there. Certainly for sure. Ben, um, when uh, river crossings is, is worth carrying an extra air filter, yeah, and sometimes uh, water get, does get in the air box. And, look, particularly if you don't have a snorkel, that's certainly a big issue. And, look, my my philosophy on, on the high country is no snorkel, no high country. It's as simple as that. But in the day, look, some people do, do run the gauntlet, you know, and they do try and um, they can't maybe afford to put in a snorkel on right at the moment. They want to go and have a bit of a look around and, you know, in the day, it's a massive risk, and any sort of water that, particularly with your like your diesel engines, only takes a drip to get inside that engine, and fed income she'll destroy it. So, if um, that's one of the first things there, you want to be sort of looking at if you want to have a really good look through the high country, probably any time of year, it doesn't have to be just winter, is get a snorkel on as, as quick as you can. And you know, there's other advantages too, you know, with your engine breathing better and that sort of stuff, and the air's up higher and that sort of thing. But Particularly with river crossings, absolute must. And yeah, I've, I've said that for ages. No river, no snorkel, no river, no eye country. But hey, anyway, you just got to work that one out as you go forward. Um, Glenn, there, <clears throat> love your work. Thanks, mate. Uh, feeling you to fall driving and learn heaps. That's great. Love that sort of feedback. Good, you're uh, getting some getting some value out of this stuff we do, mate. Because yeah, love having a chat with all sorts from here, from beginners all the way through. It's good stuff. Um, Paul, uh, water water mis, um, mistakes get uh, get you straight away. Mud and sand, you can get it later. Yeah, spot on. And yeah, you know, so I say, you know, water, you just don't want to get it wrong. You want to get it right before you even before you even wet the tires. You want to get it right. And gear selection is key. Get that momentum right and get you all the way through. And second gear always seems to be the go. First gear, tick with my vehicle going into a river crossing or any of these. You know, first gear would be way too low for me, and you'd be. Probably spinning tyres, I'd be spinning tyres of going across, you know, a loose rocky bottom, and that is the last thing you want is losing traction, especially if it's a fast-flowing river because then you're going to get stuck getting pushed sides, sideways. So second gear is always my ultimate gear ratio. Third gear would be probably too high, particularly if it's a bull bar or deeper. 
Um, because then you got that extra force up against the front of the bull bar that's sort of wanting to push you backwards while you're trying to go forwards in maybe a higher gear. So third, second gear is always a good range that I've, I've always found. It just seems to be the gear range that everyone tends to use and it just works. So, yeah, second gear low range is definitely the go. Engine braking is uh, is key for river crossings and, and don't stream um, from, from the brakes, yeah. Um, yeah, get get your brakes sort of cool and that sort of stuff if you, before you jump into them. Uh, mix. Um, some some stalls on a hill and they roll back into into that and trouble starts. Yeah, look, um, sort of covered a couple of videos there about stall recoveries and that sort of thing. So maybe check out some of that. Uh, Leanne, before crossing, I oh, cool my motor. Yep, yeah. You know, if you if you've been driving, um, you know, some down some steep tracks and uh, or up and down steep tracks, and all of a sudden you come to a river crossing. Well, the best thing you want to do before you drop drop your drop your vehicle in there is yeah, let it cool down for you know for the five or so minutes and. Kick back, maybe have a cup of while everything cools down, your brakes and your diffs and all that sort of stuff, especially if you don't have diff breathers and that sort of thing going on and gearbox breathers, whereas, you know, again, patrol, it comes standard with all that sort of stuff, so a bit lucky there. But, it, you know, that's another good thing too to certainly look into um, is breathers on your diffs and that sort of thing. So let them cool down, let your brakes cool down. As soon as you drop into any sort of cold river with, you know, hot brakes and hot diffs and all that sort of stuff, particularly your diffs, um, you know, everything – it just expands inside and you know and water gets inside all your seals and that sort of thing. So it's the last thing you you want. So and with brakes you can certainly you know warp your your discs and everything too if they're too hot. So let things cool down for a few minutes, then go and do your river crossing is certainly the way to go for sure. Um best to stop, yeah, cool your brakes net down. Yeah, Kev, absolutely, mate. That's for sure. Matt, um, the boys at full drive 24-7 need to listen to <laughs> yeah, mate. No worry. Like, like I said, you know. I've I've seen so many videos of um and river crossings is is probably the big one you know with with stuff we've talked about here tonight about you know flying through and I've seen a stack of videos not just theirs but I've seen a heap of videos where you know like I said it looks fantastic you know big water spout coming out from under your car but mate it's the best way to damage a truckload of bits under that bonnet and cause your world to hurt and that's when momentum then comes your enemy big time so yeah not not great at all not good. Um, Kevin, uh, stop the stop the bank on the other side and let, let the water drain off. Yeah, look, that's certainly a great tip there. You know, and I pretty much nine times out of ten, I'll, I'll do this as I'm going through a river crossing, coming out the other side. I'll stop before I, you know, just as I e exit that water, the river just stop there, let the water drain off your vehicle rather than drag it up the track, particularly if you're going away with a convoy and stuff, because otherwise it just makes it harder. If it's a steep exit. Um, just makes it harder for everyone else that's coming through. So stop drain that water off. And also it stops all that muddy crap running back into the river system and, you know, and, and polluting that up as well. So certainly plenty of advantage there for stopping at the other side there and, um, yeah, letting that water drain off before you drive up the track. Um, for that, those couple of reasons, it's definitely the go. Braden, uh, seen a bloke up uh, Crooked River, no snorkel, blowing his yeah, BT-50. So there, there you go. And, and it will certainly happen, you know, Massive risk driving any sort of a river crossing. Um, pretty much, yeah, I, I wouldn't do it in any sort of depth. But, um, but yeah, without with a snorkel, it's um, got danger written all over it. So get one on as soon as you pro probably can if you haven't got one, that's for sure. Mark, yeah, yeah slow and steady is, is great, that's for sure, mate. Work works a treat. Um, my dad uh, had a snorkel and we never had a problem up the high country doesn't have a snorkel well there you go well he, he must be either very, if you're very very conscious of it and you know where you know where your entry point is to your to your air intake well you know you could potentially get away with it particularly if it's a you know a shallower river crossing you know where it's well and truly running underneath your vehicle and you just crawl and you get that right gear selection in get the momentum right where you just crawl across well you can as long as you're aware of it you've got to be super aware of it if you don't have a snorkel and you must know where that air intake is, where the air is getting sucked into your engine there, because that's where the water's going to go. And if it goes in there, you're in all sorts of trouble. But, you know, but there's, there's, um, God, there, his dad, um, yeah, has no issues with it. But as I said, he's obviously very, very switched on with it and fully aware of the potential problems by not having a snorkel and going through at a nice, nice rate where you don't have any dramas. Can diff, uh, diff breathers sucking water into red hot dip, um, totally, uh, hot dip, totally. Yeah, can. Um, yeah, just got to make sure your dip breathers are absolutely the game, mate. I've got to say my patrol comes standing with them. And, again, and yeah, you, but again, you just got to make sure you stop before you go in 
after you've been doing some steep stuff or whatever, stop and let everything cool down before you drop in. Like I'd still do that even with breathers because the last thing you want is any water getting in there and that sort of stuff. So just stop and stop before you drop in is definitely the go. 80ZX, good to see you back, mate. Thanks very much there. Greatly appreciate you yeah, dropping in there tonight. Uh, Ross, um, don't head into water until the car ahead has cleared. Yeah, and that's sort of another one. You know, it's amazing every time you see, you know, you see convoys going across river crossings and you'll see a bloke that's halfway across and and the next two or three are following up behind him and I think, far out, you know. You know, this has got danger written all over it too. You know, if the car and vehicle in front of you has, has an issue, not might hit a rock, get hung up on a rock, and then all of a sudden you then, particularly if you've got a manual, as I mentioned earlier on, um, you know, then you've got to start hitting clutches and stopping in the middle of the river. Absolute not no go zone. So, yeah, go across one at a time and wait till the other guy comes out the other side, and then you drive, drive him in and do the same thing and you'll get through the other side, no dramas at all. Generally, that's generally the go. I uh, should do a live on uh, bog holes and, um, yeah, bog holes. Well, you know what? I I don't I, – I'll drive bog holes if, if I have to, but feeding them, they are one part of full driving I don't go looking for at all because driving bog holes, it's, um, they just destroy anything, anything that moves under there and there's – you know, you have a look under your vehicle and all the stuff that turns from your tail shaft to your wheels and tyres and um, brakes and – bearings and that sort of stuff, anything that spins under the air and it gets covered in, you know, that really fine, sloppy, gritty, muddy stuff that you find in bog holes, just bending and destroys it. It's like, it's like cut and paste going, going into, you know, into those, those items, those areas that move around. So, you know, bog holes, they, they can be a lot of fun. There's no doubt about it. Um, but, yeah, I only drive them if I have to, but I don't get up on a weekend thinking, oh, where's the first bog hole? I'm going to go looking for it because that is not the sort of stuff. I like to go and drive. Only if I have to. If I'm confronted with it and there's no other way around it, well, yeah, do it and uh, get out the other side. Uh, Jade, um, no matter how well you, you think your diffs and transmission are sealed um, with breathers, etc., if you've been on a big trip, yeah, again, just um, yeah, check check all that sort of stuff and keep, keep saying, even though I've got all those sort of things, you know, on my trial with diff breathers and all that sort of stuff, but I still always make sure I let, let it all cool down before I go in um, for that, those times because, yeah, you don't want any sort of water ingress um, in, in, your, in those sort of areas. Cam, uh, the Latham Brothers 974 video to Cape York and the crossing of the Jardine River um, with the winch rope going across the river, around a tree and, and back to the second vehicle on the south bank is amazing. Oh, look, Leyland Brothers, how, how good were those, those videos? And only if you could have travelled the country back then, like they would have seen it, would have been absolutely amazing. But, hey, it's a very, very different sort of country now. It's well-developed and so different from, uh, from those days. Uh, Clinton, what gear do you use in a river crossing auto? Um, well, auto's not so bad. Again, you, you want, you'd want to lock it in a gear or, again, I wouldn't leave it in in, in, um, in auto in dr or in drive because, um, again, it's going to change gears when the auto thinks it needs to because, the you know, particularly if you're doing a river crossing where, you know, it's full bar or deeper, um, same sort of thing as, like I mentioned, you know, with um, driver up sand dune. You'd want to lock it into a gear so it can't change gears. You don't want to be changing gears halfway across because, you know, it could load up way too much and, you know, then you could uh, you could potentially come to a stop or find it really, really hard to get through. So, again, lock, lock it into a gear, lock it in that second gear, low range with your auto as well so it can't change gears midway across and get yourself through. Nine times out of ten, no worries. Hopefully that, that's generally the go. G'day, Ryan. How are you going there, mate? Thanks very much there for coming there tonight. Layton, um, uh, is uh, is the cab taking on water even an issue with momentum in there? As long as um, as long as you keep moving, I've never had water come inside my patrol ever. As long as you keep moving, and your door seals are generally pretty good, um, generally. But that's generally the key with river crossing. As long as you keep moving, you shouldn't get water inside your door seals. The only time you're going to get water generally inside your door seals is if you come to a stop. So. As long as you're moving, the water's passing down the side of your vehicle. Nine times out of ten, you shouldn't get water inside your doors, inside your door skins, and in, in inside your vehicle. But um, if you come to a stop, that's when it's going to be a very different situation, and then you're going to really rely on. Then you're going to really find out how good your door seals are if you come to a stop. But yeah, you don't really want to do that at all if you can. Uh, Kevin, um, always uh, always have an alternative track um, there to if a river is too full. But sometimes you can't, you know, um, like a short trip up Fulton's Bypass. Yeah, look, if, if you can, um, 
you know, you, if you can get a bypass track, but sometimes there's just no option. And you've got to decide, well, you're going to run the gauntlet and drive across or you're going to turn around and go all the way back you've come. And that's that's your, sort of your two options. If you haven't got a track around it, well, um, and it's too dangerous to go across, well, you've got to weigh it up. I'd be turning around and going back. And I've certainly done that enough times over my time where I've turned around because it's just not safe to go across. And one of those was on the down the bottom of Hearn Spur Track where you hit the one and go to River down there, very first crossing. That was actually on an action trip, actually, where we turned around and went back because the one and go was absolutely cranking. Um, and that certainly can happen down in that area down there because the one and go catches a lot of water, that's for sure. Uh, Mix, um, I'm on, on bog holes, mate. Yeah, I, I avoid them. Yeah, I avoid bog holes to the nth degree, but I only drive them if I certainly have to because, yeah, they're going to destroy anything that spins and turns under there. And in the day, then it's just going to cost you a buckload of money and then trying to clean it and all that sort of stuff. Again, I don't, I'm not fussed about my vehicle getting dirty, the patrol getting dirty, and I wash it, but you know, trying to get that sloppy, muddy, gritty stuff out from under there, it's a bloody nightmare. So, Try and avoid it if you can, but hey, everyone likes to go and have some play in some mud, so <laughs> knock yourself out if that's what you like to go and do. But yeah, not my thing, that's for sure. Um, Braden, uh, generally use second in, in an auto. Yeah, second gear, there's another one there. It's, yeah, it just seems to be the go to gear range, whether it's um, whether you're auto or manual when it comes to river crossings, is dropping into second gear. The only thing though, with with one of one things there with an auto, you know, if, if you maybe get hung up on a you know on a rock or something, at least you can throw it into reverse and reverse back up. Well, you can do it too with a manual too, but um, you know, you run big risks. As soon as you hit that clutch, opens everything up, water gushes inside, then you get that water between your, you know, in, on your clutch plate in there and yeah, it can cause all sorts of grief. Um, so that's the only difference, one of the main differences there with an auto, you won't have that problem if you've got to chuck it in reverse and reverse back up to get around a hung up rock or something like that. Um, my OCD is, is playing uh, um, an unpainted <laughs> wall patch. I'm not sure what's going on there, Mark, but uh, hopefully it's all it's all going all right. Ross, um, if you're looking at uh, Leyland Brothers, have a look at Malcolm, uh, Malcolm Douglas, mate. How much of a fair income legend was that guy? And, um, yeah, it's an absolute tragedy what ended up happening there. But, yeah, absolute legend of, um, of, of Australian uh, travelling, that's for sure. Malcolm Douglas, both them, Malcolm Douglas and Leyland Brothers, absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, really good. Uh, like, thanks for that. Uh, I've always been a little, little iffy with that. Um, must, the must, missus is, um, is more more worried than, than me. Well, as long as someone's worrying about you, mate. But um, yeah, so that's great. If that's helped you out, that's certainly um, that's a good result there, mate. Really good, good feedback. Ross, um, thanks, mate. Mark, um, no worries. G'day, George, Jordan. How you going there, mate? Thanks so much there coming there tonight. Greatly appreciate it. CIJ, um, how you going there, mate? Uh, here is a tip. Make sure your, your snorkel is sealed before going to water. Well, you know, that's certainly another thing too, you know, is do check your snorkel and make sure that, you know, it is all sealed up properly because, you know, it can be if it can be nearly as bad as not having a snorkel on full stop. You know, if you've got a, one of your joins is not quite sealed properly and, you know, um, so, yeah, so that's certainly one worth checking over, you know, go over your snorkel and, and make sure it connects into your air box all nice and firm and tight and all your seals are all good there because otherwise, yeah, you nearly run the same problem as not having a snorkel. So that's another good tip. Check out your snorkel and make sure it's all sealed up nice and, nice and um, well and truly, that's for sure. Um. Jordan, what are your thoughts on uh, throttle controllers? Well, I I don't have one. I've never had one. Um, I um, yeah, I, I don't I don't can't really probably comment too much about one of those. Um, but you know, when I'm going across sort of any sort of river crossing, that I, I just sort of lock my push my foot, my accelerator foot up against sort of the wall of the you know the the side wall down there where where my foot is, and that sort of helps to sort of you know my foot's not moving back and forth sort of stuff, but. Yeah, I don't really know much about the th throttle controllers, so um, yeah, can't sort of speak too much about those ones. Someone else might um, might know what's going on with those, but yeah, I'm not really not really sure on those ones. Leanne, um, please put a Batesy sticker on on the. <laughs> oh come on! I, I I keep keep it leaving it there. I'm going to think I'm going to leave it there because it, it's becoming a turning point. I'm glad you guys are picking up on it. That that big patch on me <laughs> all up there. But um, yeah, I'm, I should actually, I might chuck a stick on it one day. So here we go. Um, 
Hello, um, how much fuel efficiency do you lose by upsizing your tyres? Look, you'll lose. It depends how big you're going to go. You know, it's going. To, it's certainly the bigger tyres you're going to go. Well, it's going to affect it a little bit. Like I've only got thirty threes on mine, and um, and mine's standard. That I um, pretty much sort of that sort of size. So you know, I haven't really lost a great deal. But you know, but if I went up to thirty fives, and then you don't do gear ratios and change diff ratios and that sort of stuff, well, yeah, it's going to have a, a certain impact on your fuel economy, but. Um, just depending on how big a tyre you're looking to put on there, mate. But, yeah, any sort of um, bigger tyre size is going to affect it to some degree. just depends how big you're going to end up going with it. Uh, Caravan Mods, uh, any recommendations for towing in the high country with an auto? Should I be looking at installing additional transmission coolers? Look, absolutely. Um, again, I've not done a lot of towing with, with an auto. Um, if I'm not sure where your base, mate, but if you're talking about auto coolers and that sort of stuff, have a chat with Rod and Stu down at Wholesale Automatics down there in Bayswater. They are all over um, the coolers and that sort of thing. And Rod's very, very, they're both those guys extremely knowledgeable about the uh, how much a, an auto cooler will make. Makes a big difference. So, yeah, certainly well worth having a chat. And if you're going to do a lot of towing, depends on where you're going to go and how much towing you're going to do and what sort of country you're going to drive over. Um, again, to how hard your auto is going to be working. But, yeah, it'd certainly be well worth having a chat with those guys, mate, um, down there at uh, Hustle Automatics. Well worth having a yarn with them. Um, Toyota Land Cruiser. G'day, mate. Uh, he's going to always answering that one there. Righto. Bourbon and <laughs> Russell's got a bourbon and coke today. That's, uh, that's all going good, and hopefully everyone's going all right with um, all this crap that's going on. But but anyway, I think that, um, you know, that, that sort of covers it, um, the momentum sort of topic, and hopefully, uh, you know, these full drive tips for newbies and, you know, anyone else might be able to get a uh, few few tips out of this um, for, you know, taking on those trains, you know, from your sand dunes to muddy, slippery stuff to driving river crossings, but great feedback about all the river crossings, amazing um, it was pretty much all about rivers tonight. So, yeah, really, really good. But uh, we'll wrap it up here now, guys, and uh, greatly appreciate you all coming here tonight and glad to be back having a yarn to you guys and talking some more crap with you guys on a Sunday night. So we'll see what happens for next week. And um, and tomorrow night's video is uh, all locked and loaded, ready to go. Murray River solo number two, follow on from the one from last week. Another cracking location. Check that out tomorrow night, 5 p.m. It'll be on ready to roll. Good on you guys. Have a great week. Stay safe wherever, wherever you are. Let's hope we can all get back out in the bush very, very soon. And we'll catch up with you then, I reckon. Good on you guys. Have a good one. Thanks very much for tuning in. See you later on. Uru. <laughs>